Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is our discussion of uh, anarchy in America. And I am Edwin Eterti, along with Henry Goujon and Dr. Annette Tejero in Las Vegas. Uh, the past couple past couple weeks, we've been seeing a lot of uh, anarchy uh, in America. And the last few days, uh, both the Democrats and the Republicans have uh, started to talk, of, talk about and, and are introducing uh, bills. The latest bill that has been introduced by the Democrats is the Justice and Policing Act. Um, let's learn more about the act. Uh, Dr. Annette, what have you learned about the act? Well, you know, right now the act is just in the beginning stages, but there are some points <laughs> that the New York Times stated about this bill. It, it goes through the portions of how they're going to be funding and what kinds of strings they're gonna to attach to federal funding for uh, law enforcement. So they wanna change some of the um, civil rights protections that have to do with making uh, police liable for constitutional violations, whatever that means. Um, uh, knowingly and willingly, reckless disregard for people's rights, um, that all sounds pretty good, but I'm not quite sure how that's going to be smithed together. Um, the bill restricts the use of lethal force in certain situations. So perhaps this is taking it out of the police officer, law enforcement's hands, and starting to give potential liability for any choices that they make. And we've seen this on several occasions where people will chop up video to make law enforcement look bad. And unfortunately, once it's out there, it's hard to reverse. Um, there's also uh, some type of removal of the qualified immunity. Uh, I think New York has a certain immunity or certain protections for the privacy of officers, you know, their private address, their private family details, all kinds of things that are in their personnel file that are kept private. Um, that may not be discoverable. And they're going through their thing of trying to change that and expose more of what happens. It, and all of this is coded in transparency, of course, but some of it is a bit excessive and will make it difficult for law enforcement to be able to function. Um, there's also um, prohibiting profiling. And in law enforcement, Profiling sometimes will aid officers in being able to identify uh, tips that they've been given, um, criminals of a particular race. You know, if, if someone comes to you as a victim and says that they've had the same kind of profile for someone who's attacked them, and now you can't profile, then that kind of puts a damper and hamstrings our law enforcement and being able to carry out the task of apprehending criminals. Um, uh, there's an aim to ban federal no-knock warrants. And, and if you remember, a no-knock warrant is somewhat dangerous for not only the people that are involved in that building, but also for law enforcement because they just barge in. And these kinds of things have ended up with some tragedies, and I understand that but blanketly saying that we have to restrict those kinds of warrants um, may get a little dicey and dangerous because it may actually lean towards covering up criminals and hamper our SWAT teams and uh, law enforcement. <coughs> um, it would require the federal uniform law enforcement officers to wear body cameras. We know that police departments thus far have either embraced or because of funding or whatever have decided that body cams are not for them, but this would make it um, tied to federal grants. So again, the impetus is to have every police officer with a body cam and all the restrictions that that may apply. Um, the bill would limit the transfer of military grade weapons to police departments um, with some exceptions here and there, but Again, we don't really want our police departments to be militarized, but we do want them to be able to defend themselves. And as we know, um, criminals, cartels, they have the latest and the greatest sometimes of uh, weapons, sometimes to the point of being domestic terrorists. So again, we, we have to really balance these things out. And the bill aims to grant uh, subpoena power to the Justice Department to investigate patterns and practices of police misconduct. 
and provides $100 million in grant money over a decade to fund similar investigations by state attorney generals. Um, there's a lot in this bill, and of course, the way that things are leaning, uh, it is a bit difficult because we seem to be leaning towards making it easier for criminals to be able to scrutinize our police department and perhaps gain some knowledge that may set them up uh, in the future. Right, and uh, your thoughts, Henry, as a former police, uh, police officer. Well, my thoughts, thank you, Edwin. Yeah, I'm a former uh, transit police officer here in New York. And I gotta tell you that it is worrisome because exactly, I, I agree with Dr. Nett. They are, and I'm telling you, they're entering into a, an area that's in uncharted waters and where police officers that wear these, these, uh, these cameras, which I'll put it like this, almost similar to my cell phone. And it's very, it's productive. I, if, if you ask me, uh, I, I, I'm a pro police, a former officer, and I believe in the cameras because it not only protects the citizen, protects the officer from somebody making claims of police brutality. So I think overall on both sides that it helps. Um, when it comes to this bill, it does worry me because I want to see committees. I want to see these federal committees on a congressional level. They should be having hearings. They should be bringing in experts and to say from both sides, they should have from the community, they should have from the police, uh, and just experts across the board. And they should speak and to say, you know, they should be able to do this bipartisan. I don't think it's going to be bipartisan because the House has been so combative. And what they have been doing in the past, they're going to continue doing. And they're just going to cram this down the House Republicans and not going to allow these committees on a federal level. And the state level, same thing. I had this problem with city council. New York State Senate, they do not have these appropriate hearings to have uh, the community and to have experts from the police department to give in their, their thoughts and to say what's the best thing. They're cramming this down. The New York City right now has a similar bill and they're cramming this down the next couple of weeks and they are gonna be defunding the police department which has, NYPD has a $6 billion budget and they're planning to, to uh, allocate 1.1 billion into youth services. Who doesn't want that? Yes, we want the youth services to continue, but there's other areas in New York City that can be, you know, if they want to cut the fat from all this uh, wasteful money. And you see uh, Mayor de Blasio and, and even on a state level, Governor Cuomo, they have all this wasteful money, but they want to take away from the police. That worries me. What do you think? Right. You know, what about, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Nett. Go ahead. What are your thoughts, Henry, on this ban of the use of choke holds, carotid holds, and neon neck restraints that supposedly contributed to George Floyd's death? Thank you for bringing that up, Dr. Nett. I actually spoke to a candidate in the street yesterday. He's running for 16th Congressional. He's a former cop. There is a law. Listen to this, guys. People that are listening. In Minneapolis, their policy is there's a use of force for neck restraint and it's called the 5-300 use of force. And more particular, it's called 5-311 in this policy, the use of neck restraints and chokeholds. And it's been reformed on various occasions. They allow this, guys. When this thing gets to the, the, the when it becomes a trial, they're going to bring this. I disagree with it. A lot of cops, a lot of top cops agree with it throughout the United States. But Minneapolis has this in their policy and i think they should come after also the city itself not just to try to dismantle the police but try to reform i believe in the reform in the police reform this this horrible neck restraint chokehold eric garner in 2014 in new york we all saw that again i'm pro police ex-cop i do not agree with what that officer did even though eric garner was a big guy he was over 300 pounds but he had a chokehold on him there was officers on scene. I want to remind everybody, during that incident and that uh, what happened, there was a black female sergeant on scene. When there is a, a, a sergeant on scene, the commanding officer on scene, as soon as that officer says, let go, everybody has to drop what they're doing as a following command. That black female, and they don't show that that much. That's why we have to see all the details. And that's what got me upset with the Garner case. But answering your question, Dr. Nett, this is a use that's being used in Minneapolis and in other police departments. This has to be reformed because this is something on a medical point of view, you could tell us how 
on a medical point of view, you can have somebody's knee on somebody's neck. Well, we're gonna take we're gonna take a break right now. We're gonna take a hard break. Uh, we appreciate the discussion. Uh, we all agree that uh, the police need reforming. Uh, defunding is another issue. 